What if I told you I uncovered the formula for calculating any tech salary at any tech company? I know, stick with me. This is going to be mostly a screen share video where I'm actually going to show you this process. I am so excited about this video because when I figured this out, I thought, well, I have to really share this with the audience. And this is something I've shared in my lives uh, the last few weeks. But we're going to get right down into business. We're going to talk through it and I'm going to hop right into a screen share and you are going to see all of a sudden for a role in a market where there was no data, I'm going to uncover data for you. If you like what we're doing, please smash that like button. And if you like our overall content, please subscribe. So item one, levels.fyi. This is your source. This is the best place to get the most accurate data on tech salaries today. Glassdoor, indeed, don't look at them. You can absolutely look for more written comments and written notes on teamblind.com. That's also a good resource. But levels.fyi is actually the source where we have the numbers. And that's where we're going to go. So we're going to flip right into that screen share. And I am going to show you this formula, show you this methodology. And it's so awesome. And I'm so excited. So I'm going to screen share now. Okay, so this is what levels.fyi looks like. I'm sure most of you have been here. But just in case you haven't, this is kind of how it looks. The most important piece is you're going to be able to click on any of these companies to dive in. And then if you click down on this more list, you can see that there are just a ton, ton, ton of companies here. So it's awesome. So let's go to trusty Google. We'll use Google as our baseline in this video. So we're going to go view salary ranges as more. And let's say, for example, we're going after something like Hmm, what would we want to go after? Let's say let's we're going after a marketing role. So I'm going after a marketing role and I'm in Warsaw, Poland. Well, there's no data on marketing roles in Warsaw, and that's not surprising. Warsaw is a smaller Google market. So here is the tip or trick. What we do is we just go back, we scroll all the way to the top, and we go to software engineer instead. And then when we scroll down and type in Warsaw, now all of a sudden we have 31 data points. But what we're less interested in is people who have already been at the company. So we'll just go to our filters and we'll use the filter of new offers only. This is going to show us just new offers and we can even organize this in terms of comp. Now these older numbers uh, they'll always flag older data points, which I like, but you'll see these older numbers are actually pretty consistent. But now we still have maybe a little bit more data than we want. And we can expand this out to 25 rows. But maybe we know we're going for a more junior level, newer grad role um, for marketing. So now we'll just type in new grad. Okay, now we have these data points and again we can decide whether we want to eliminate these two data points but they look so close that now we could just go into our calculator and say okay we have these five data points so if we take these five numbers so we have 50,000 which we can throw right in here so we'll go 50,000 plus 52,000 plus we had 57,000 as a data point plus we had 60,000 as a data point, plus we had that 65K offer. So we have the high end and the low end. And then all we're gonna do is divide that by five to get our mid range number, 56,800. Then we're gonna times it times 0.7. So we're at about that 40K mark for total comp or saw for a marketing role. The reason why we take it at about 70%, you can take it at 70%, 75%, 65%, but 70% is a nice, nice number because that's about the amount that software engineers are going to make more than a regular employee. Software engineers are the highest paying role in the world. So now we went from literally having no data points on Warsaw to having these really good data points and having an idea of how to look at this. So let's go back. Let's try something that's um, more US based, for example. So let's go back to marketing and let's see, let's take a, a less busy market like Pittsburgh, for example. So again, 
Pittsburgh, no data, unfortunately. So we're going to go back, pull up Software Engineer again. We'll go into Pittsburgh. Okay, now what do we have? So now we have, all of a sudden, we went from no data points to 61 data points. But again, we want to use this filter and scroll down and use new offers only. And then again, let's say we're going for a more junior level, new grad type of marketing role. So when we filter this out, now all of a sudden, we're down to 14 rows and we have, you know, five older data points and that's okay. But now I want to just do this up and down on the total compensation just so we can see the range. Because what you'll find here is, you'll see there's maybe some outliers here. The ML and AI, especially, you'll see are the top three out of four. And they're kind of skewing away from the median here a little bit. So you could factor them in, but especially these top two numbers, just know that AI and ML engineers get paid more. Um, it's just a data point. There's a few roles in the world that pay more. AI and ML is one of them. But now we're just kind of looking at the numbers. Let's maybe cut out those couple numbers. And we're seeing this kind of one... 35 up to 200 and it's kind of skewing in the middle let's do something instead of pulling all those numbers and doing the calculator again let's just call it 170 maybe to bring up a little bit on the higher end and then we're going to times that times 0 0.7 119 so is 120 total comp for an l3 marketing person in pittsburgh does that sound right yeah could it be a little bit higher Absolutely, it could be a little bit higher. So maybe you think at, and look at these numbers and you think, oh, for the Pittsburgh market, yeah, maybe I would want to be targeting something more like 130. Okay, remember the 70% range is just a target number. If it seems more accurate that it would be around 75% of a software engineer salary, something like that. But you'll see these numbers get very, very accurate. And I can just tell you that this formula really works. And the great thing about levels is if we go back here and go back one more time, this works for all these companies because if we go into Microsoft, you can see tons of data on software engineers. If we go into Facebook and go in here, you're going to see the software engineer data if we click in and we actually look at this, there's 2,739 rows. And even if you went in and filtered and just put new offers only, this is obviously all locations. We have 1,424 data points for new offers only. It's really unbelievable. And so the reason why I just absolutely love this process is it removes all the ambiguity. You have all these data points, so we use all these data points to make sure that we're having success. And again, right around that 70% range, 75% range, 65% range is a great way to look at it. And even if we're around that 10% variation, it's a lot closer than we were before when we had absolutely no data. My goal as always is to remove as many ambiguities from this overwhelming process as we can. And whether you're currently in the negotiation phase, you're interviewing or you're actively looking to interview at any of these companies, now we have something to build off of. We can say, okay, this is actually viable for me to make this move, for me to take this job, for me to understand how to negotiate, etc. Because there's always going to be a ton of data on software engineers and it's just so valuable for us. Now here's the last point. The last point is now we have that software engineer number that's likely going to be pretty close to our anchor so when we go in and we're asking for a number i usually recommend going 20 to 30 percent above so now we have our anchor number as well so software engineers have not only given us the opportunity to see what we're going to be making in our current role at the level we're targeting in our location but now they're giving kind of a valid idea for us to anchor with. Now we might want to anchor right at that number, a little above, a little below. Remember, there's always going to be a little bit of movement on these ranges, but now we have an anchor too. So just this one data point of software engineers at all these major tech companies, 
has uncovered this magical formula for us to see how much we might be making in our role. I really hope this video helps.